welcome to Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, we'll be talking about how to keep fit and stay active as we age. I, I always use a silly phrase, motion is lotion. That's meaning that it's important for the well-being and longevity of our bodies to keep moving. If we are forced to be in less than optimal positions at work, our bodies become at risk for strain, degeneration, and eventual pain. It is critical thus to do a counteractive exercise or two to keep our bodies mobile and undo these harmful postures. In this show today, we will learn secrets from two former military helicopter pilots and Ironman triathletes on the importance of posture, exercise, and state of mind to help keep your bodies fit and free from pain as you age. Let me welcome my lifelong friends, Doug Atkins, who currently flies for Boston MedFlight, and Scott Needle, who unbelievably is still competing in Ironman triathlons after all of these years. Aloha, Doug and Scott. <laughs> welcome. Aloha. How are you guys doing? Great. It's good to be here. Good to be here, Chris. Thanks for having us. Okay, awesome. So, Scott, I understand you've been working from home since March 1st. Is that right? Yeah, just about. How's that been? You're usually in an office, but now you're at home, I see. Yeah. Um, you know, overall, it's been good, but oh, got a cat. Like I explained, one of the big challenges that I'm finding is as opposed to being in an office where you walk around and go talk to people and you're mobile throughout the day, I'm at a desk all day now. So I have to make it a point to get up and get the heck away from this desk, even if it's just to walk to the other side of the house or to walk around the block. Yeah, that's, that's so important. That's something that I, I try to talk about all the time. And, and Doug, I think you're at work right now. Is that right? So you may hopefully not have to go out and do anything, but. Hopefully yeah, I'm on, I'm at work and if we get a call, I'll have to go, but uh, hopefully for the next little bit, uh, I'll be here. So. Okay. So your work is at a desk or sometimes in a helicopter. Is that right? I uh, kind of it's like uh, working like a firefighter. I, I'm at a, an airport in Massachusetts uh, with a helicopter sitting outside. And if we get a call, um, like we did earlier today, for uh, you know, somebody who had got an injured, we'll go out with the helicopter and uh, pick them up from one of the outlying communities and bring them into one of the great hospitals in Boston. Uh, okay, that's well. So, that's, but that's... When we're not flying, though, we're we're often we're sitting around the office, kind of waiting for stuff to happen. Um, we do have a little workout facility here, but you know, and we get up there occasionally and do a little something or walk around the, uh, the ramp where the aircraft is, um, just to stay active a little bit at work. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not completely sedentary, but it's hard, not a, not a ton of motion. Yeah, that's right. So, so we had talked about the Hilo hunch a, a few months back and I know Scott, we were just talking about that too. And I said, Hey, was that a problem for you too? And you said, Oh yeah. What is this Hilo hunch? You guys like what I think, I know Doug, you explained it, but could you explain it for the viewers? What is this thing that the community is talking about? Helicopter pilots, particularly aging helicopter pilots are known to have lower back problem. Um, the nature of flying the helicopter, you tend to lean forward in your seat a little bit. Uh, generally with a slight twist in uh, on your right side to hold the cyclic, which is the stick in the middle that you use for directional control. And you tend to try to have a very light touch on that. So you tend to put your weight on your, uh, of your elbow on your knee. So you mm. keep a very light touch stick. And you also usually keep your feet out on the, your heels on the deck, kind of very lightly touching the control pedals. And then hold that kind of isometrically for, you know, 20 minutes to four hours or so as you fly. Um, and then couple that with a, helicopters are a whole lot of vibration. So mm -hmm. in that we kind of odd, slightly twisted isometric position, then you're sub subjected to a variety of different vibrations, you know, for an extended period as well. So the, the end result is it's pretty common ailment for folks who fly helicopters to end up with some, some lower back issues. Because um, you're I kind of hunched, hunched over and in the Navy and, you know, other workplaces, you may call them choppers in the Navy, uh, Coast Guard, they're helos. So the helo hunch is a, is a helo hunch. I think it's, oh, oh goodness. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, so as well. I was surprised. I was surprised when you said that you had trouble because I know in, in San Diego, we were all doing triathlons and running and biking and swimming and doing all these things. And we were also in our, in our, 20s and, and 30s and so pains that we had were 
from doing the crazy things that we did for exercise, but you're six, two or three or something. Is that right? I'm I'm about six, one. So. Okay. uh, Scott's Scott's taller than you, right? Large looking dude. So for sure. Well, Scott, you're taller than Doug, right? Yeah, I'm six, two. Oh, you are. So you're about the same. I don't know. It's been a long time, but uh, (laughs) What, what did you guys have problems in San Diego when you were flying back in the day for the for the Navy? Yeah, I, I, I encountered another thing that a lot of helicopter pilots definitely got then. I don't know what it's like now, but I got to imagine it's the same, but they call it night vision goggle neck. So you have a helmet on and night vision goggles. I don't know, Doug, I trying to remember is about two or three pounds cantilevered off the front of your helmet with a one pound battery pack on the back. And then there was another piece that went on the side that was a pound. And it's like looking through a toilet paper tube. So you're constantly having to move your head around at night and it's just chronic soft tissue damage and pain in the upper traps and the, and the bottom of the neck. And that yeah, well, has lingered all these years. We yeah, try to then, balance, oh, go ahead. Just to balance that out now. Now a lot of times they're actually adding a, a weight to the battery pack that goes on the back of the helmet to counterbalance the weight of the goggles on the front. Hmm. Uh, and then you kind of do weird things. You'll fly with them flipped up sometimes too. So you've got that weight goes into a weird spot as well. Um, and I do that a lot now, especially now, now that I'm not flying for the military. I'm not using the goggles for the entire flight. I'll use the goggles for part of the flight and then leave them, you know, kind of locked up in a ready position if I need them um, there. So that's a whole lot of, a lot more of a, uh, a lever, uh, you know, working on, on your neck. So you get them for a while, you can definitely do it. And then, you know, older too, it's the, the wear and tear sure, but then it's all, it's just the one little weird motion. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not, it's not necessarily that I wore for three hours. It's that whatever I did, I turned funny and looked for something and just, you know, you feel that little pop or that little tingle. And then the next morning you wake up and it's, there's definitely something there. And yeah, and then you live with it for a month. So yeah. uh, that, wow. that definitely happens. I like that they do the counterbalancing on the on the pack. You know, I, I wasn't really thinking of the night vision goggles in a helicopter because when I see helicopters flying, I hear them at night, but when I see them flying, it's during the day. And I, I didn't even think about the neck other than the fact that you were leaning forward and having to have your neck kinked so that you could rest your elbow on your thigh and needing, you know, and having that forward hunched posture. I, I wasn't even paying attention to the fact there'd be a weight on your head as well while you're in that compromised posture. So what did you guys do in San Diego or now, Scott at your desk and Doug still in the in the seat of the, the airplane, what do you guys do now or what have you done to combat some of the helo hunch problems or this, wait a minute, night vision goggle neck? <laughs> uh, personally, just in terms of uh, fitness, there's, just more focus as I've gotten older. And I love your comment about how we were in our twenties and our thirties. We're nowhere near that anymore. Um, we're not than we were <laughs> at this point. Yeah. But I, I try and focus on, on functional motion strength and flexibility now as I've gotten older. So um, less focus like in the weight room on lifting like classic weight movements, more focus on being able to move, um, doing body weight, doing calisthenics, pull-ups, things like TRX, anything that uses uh, leverage and balance and all the rest of the smaller things. That doesn't mean it fixes everything. Just like Doug described, there will be a day where I'll zig when I should have zagged and I have no idea what I did, but I wake up the next morning and it's like somebody has hit me in the back of the neck with a baseball bat. (laughs) I know what you mean. (laughs) And I love that you're doing functional exercise. I think that's fantastic. As we, as we age, it, it, is very beneficial to do that sort of thing. Some bodies can do the same heavy weightlifting exercise, but other bodies, and maybe it's our bodies as we beat them up so much younger doing heavy miles running, swimming, biking, everything that we did, we got to do a little more functional exercises because the the hard weight exercises are hard on our bodies because we used them really hard pretty much all our life up until this new phase. And Doug, I think you mentioned to me, and we were talking about the Hilo Hunch months ago, that you dodged the bullet with the typical back pain that these guys get when they're retiring out of the out of flying because you, well, you said you thought it's because you, you bike so much and you mountain bike, you know, all the time. That's kind of my guess as to what 
it had to do with it. So, you know, you get a physical as you retire out of the military. Um, and, um, you know, most helicopter guys have a, get some back, you know, disability from that. And I, I didn't have it. I couldn't justify it. It really my record. Um, I may have traded it off with my knees with everything I've done. My knees are kind of a mess, but my back, it, it seems to be okay. But I, I've kind of credited that, I think, to doing a fair bit of cycling um, mm -hmm. along the way, um, you know, both, you know, road stuff and then mountain biking. You know, lately I like, you know, some, you're talking about functional exercise, you know, with, with the, the COVID restrictions, one of the things, the things I've been able to do um, with my, with my kids who I have uh, 13, 14, 15 year old boys. So I'm keeping up with them, but all the team sports all went away. But one thing, fortunately we're in New Hampshire have stayed open is uh, we've been able to do a fair bit of mountain biking because the state parks have been open and there's some great parks for mountain biking here. And I think of mountain biking is a great functional exercise. You know, road biking is a great endurance thing, but it's it's somewhat limited on the balance. You're straight line, and you're pretty much just consistent in one position and you just crank it out. With the mountain biking, you're always maneuvering. You're maybe on, on and off the bike. You're putting the foot down, balancing. You're coming, you know, you're cornering. You're going over rocks. You know, yeah. leveraging the bike around locks. So it's a constant balance exercise as well as the cardio uh, piece and the you know kind of the strength piece with the legs. And then the other thing we do is, you know, taking the dogs out to the conservation areas. Um, and similarly, you know, kind of walk trails that aren't necessarily, you know, paved or, you know, uh, flat road stuff. We're off a little bit on trail. So the walking isn't even. It's, you know, rock hopping, stepping over roots and all that kind of stuff. So, again, it's always, always balancing. So that's actually, with, a, with having done that last two months, it's actually, you know, feeling reasonably good right now. Um, in that because it's a you know it's a lot a lot of balancing exercises it is. more than more than just taking a road bike out and cranking for two hours you know so. well, I'm, I'm laughing i'm laughing because you're talking about mountain biking and uh and and eric why don't we pop up these photos of scott road biking on that big open road and i'm kind of thinking more about a stationary bike <laughs> So I, I, uh, I, it's funny, but it's so true with the biking and, and all the things that you're saying about having to be functional exercise. I've had myself, when I injured my back, I didn't have access to my road bike. It's back in Connecticut. So I've injured my back and I remember going to the gym and sitting on the stationary bike and my back was in total spasm and then leaning forward and kind of stretching it out and just riding easily and then coming back up. And I also had a patient in Connecticut a few years back who came in with an acute like hot disc where his back was spasmed. I had him do the same thing. I'm like, just pedal, lean forward. Cause it actually, you could support your arms on something. So you're not hanging on your back muscles and you're exercising. So it's actually stretching, getting blood flow in your back while you're mountain biking and standing and having to portage things, while you're road biking long distances, you're actually stretching your back because your elbows are fixed on a surface. So I, I love that. I think a lot of people don't even think, let me get on a bike, let me go exercise if my back's in spasm because it hurts, but it actually can be one of the best things to, to break a spasm. <clears throat> yeah, so, it's really stretching too. Yeah, it's great with stretching, right? You guys both stretch, Scott, do you stretch? <laughs> I, I do stretch out of necessity. So do you do yoga? Gonna, I don't do yoga. You, okay. I thought the next time. So. Oh yeah, go for it. What were we gonna say, Doug? I can, I'm not. I don't dare say I tell you I don't stretch because I know what you'll do to me the next time you see me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm very familiar with the fact that Doug does not stretch, and I remember we did this. Uh, Scott and I were texting the other day about this triathlon, and that Scott talked me into doing when I was living on the East Coast, and it was. I don't know, you swam a mile or something, ran, rode like what, 15 miles and you ran four. And so Doug and I hadn't been doing a whole lot of anything. You're with your kids and your dog and walking, hiking, whatever. And of course I was in Connecticut commuting and then standing and moving around at work, but not having a whole lot of time to do real exercise. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna start running, gonna start biking, gonna start swimming. But also we've done this a million times over with Ironmans and long distance triathlons. It's no big deal. So we show up to this race. And I remember Doug crossing the finish line and me like run walking through the four miles. I hate to admit it, but we both said, well, that was a bad idea because I think about a week or two before we started training, I don't recommend anybody do that. Like we're exercising all the time. We're not just sitting, we're going to the gym and all that, but it was embarrassing and funny at the same time. 
Well, it's, if you're young, fit, and well trained, it's not really a challenge. <laughs> there you go. And that's why I love you guys. <laughs> so, uh, so functional exercise. I want to bring up the photos, Eric. Throw up the first photo because I think this is important for anybody sitting at a desk. So this is something for the hunch. You're slouched forward in your desk over your laptop. You're slouched forward over anything. You're cleaning houses for a living. You're bending forward. You can lay on a surface. I prefer a high surface like a table or a countertop unless you have one of those high beds. You go face down. You pull your belly button into your spine to engage your deep core. And then you alternate lifting one leg and the next leg. It activates the multifidus muscles that are your deepest spinal stabilizers. So it's great for anybody with low back pain because your spine is supported on the surface. Well, let's look at the next one. Okay, this is actually a harder one. This is the opposite arm and leg exercise or, or bird dog or all these different names that everybody is talking about these days. But what the key here is to keep your belly button pulled in. You wanna activate your deepest core muscle, your deepest abdominal muscle, the transversus abdominis. And when you pull your belly button in, it works the deepest abdominal muscle, and then you alternate the opposite arm and the opposite leg that gets your multifidus muscles. It also works all your superficial core muscles, your rectus abdominis, and both of your obliques. So anytime you're leaning forward or you have back pain, neck pain, that's a great exercise to do. Not everybody can do it because you got to balance on one leg, which is why I, I like to show the other one first. And let's flip to one more. This is something you can do laying flat down. So you lay flat on the floor, flat on your bed with a pillow or something underneath your stomach. You pull your belly button in and you lift one leg just a few inches off the floor. You can also in that same position, lift both your arms straight off the floor. That's great for your posture, great to undo any forward bend. I get it too, I have to work forward on patients. At the end of the day, I'm doing this, I'm squeezing my elbows back and I'll often lay like on the floor when I get home and do these exercises. And I think we have one more for everyone. Oh yes, Hilo Hunch. I put this in for the Hilo Hunch. I used it in my scoliosis talk because I realized that you were gonna be leaning on your right leg, working on that thing, which can tighten, like it can shorten all the muscles on the right side of your body, but strain all the muscles on the left side of your body. So how you perform this exercise is you stand with the opposite side that you've been hunching toward against a wall reach your arm up overhead and drop the opposite hip and don't forget to take deep breaths this is moving your rib cage farther away from your pelvis and there's these connector muscles that are very deep that get shortened when you're sitting in a sideways hunch position left or right which some people do so you're caring for a child looking at a microscope all those things i mentioned flying a helicopter so it's important you undo these chronic positions that you're in and you don't have to worry about getting a compression back injury or pain from stenosis or a disc that gets compressed on one side because you have to sit like that all day. So you guys, are any of those familiar? Have you done any of, the, any of those? Do they look, yeah, okay. Yeah. Some of it just kind of comes naturally. Those, those seem like, you know, doing those by default just, Kind of stretch it out. It's almost a nat natural motion to do to, to lean, you know, to undo the lower back a little bit. So, yeah, it's nice would, to have your have been kind of doing on the fly. Yeah, I, I would offer just getting older again. Uh, <laughs> core working the core is like probably the single most important thing, along with the stretching, um, stretching the glutes and the lower back, and and. Um, just keeping the center of your body strong, but also limber and flexible. That has made a world of difference. Can you say that again? I should have put some stretches in there. Uh, I love that. I think the flexibility part as we age is one of the things in the clinic I end up dealing with all the time when people have back pain uh, specifically and having to have them uh, hug their knee into their chest with their other yeah. leg stretch to stretch the glutes or have it, I call it knee to opposite chest or knee to opposite shoulder where you pull it across so that your knee lines up with your shoulder and your foot's stretch the deep glute and also laying on your back to do a hamstring stretch is how I will teach people to do because they go to stretch their hamstring standing up and they're completely rounding at their back because their hamstring is so tight. But once we lay down and, and stretch those things that you mentioned, those critical, the lower back no longer has to have all that stress on it so you can strengthen it and stabilize it and go about your glorious aging years. <laughs> with I don't know about glorious. 
So Scott, what are you what are you up to? What are you raising now uh, outside of the COVID nineteen crisis shutting down some things? I'm in awe that you're still doing these long distance. Well, it's it's been a tough year. So I had a bad bike crash a year ago um, and ended up separating my right shoulder, damaging my hip, concussing myself. So th there's a public service announcement: always wear your helmet, kids, because if I had yeah. been wearing the helmet, it would have been a different story. So the past year has been really focused on rehabbing to, to start racing again this year. COVID happened. So first race of the year, which was supposed to be last weekend, was postponed by a year. Uh, so, you know, you deal with it. But yeah, I still, um, I bike, I run. Uh, fortunately, living in Seattle, it's all hills. So there's no such thing as just going flat for two hours. You've got, still got to maneuver and move and be dynamic on the bike. And running here has its own uh, beneficial challenges. I think it's swimming that I miss the most, but again, I can't complain. There's people out there genuinely suffering, but uh, those are the things I still try and stay as active as I can with, not just for physical health, but for mental health as well. And I think that's an important thing for people with this whole COVID situation, however long it goes on is go move around, get out of your house. You know, if you need to put a mask on, go put a mask on, but get away from your house and go do stuff. I think that's, I think that's, such key. It's such key. You have to get out and move. And I was actually telling one of a family member the other day, you know, hey, just go for a walk. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go for a walk. Go for a walk. There's no one around in certain towns. You're never going to see anybody, but maybe uh, some birds and things like that. But go for a walk. Walking is so refreshing and calming, even if it's a slow walk, getting outside and getting fresh air out of your space. It yeah. makes all the difference. But that's been one of the ironies of this whole situation is now a lot of the places that we would use, you know, the green space in our, in our areas now are crowded. Um, those people are doing that, which is great. They're getting out, but it's, you know, we're working some odd shift hours, you know, you get you pretty used to, I took my dogs out Wednesday at noontime. I'd have a conservation area, of, you know, 50, 75 acres to myself and let the uh -huh. dogs run and do their thing. Now, if I show up there in an afternoon, middle of the week, they're, 15 cars there you know so it's uh um so it's good in fact the people are getting out and doing stuff and that's great it's just you know kind of changed my paradigm a little bit of uh of, you know, my my abilities to uh, just have unfettered access to things so. yeah no that's true so yeah the the mindset the uh clearing your mind you know with with ironmans and long distance triathlons like we have done uh, do you have any any tips or any like inner things that either of you do or both of you do to keep up with the the exercise? I know I do, uh, and I can share them. But uh, the mindset for staying active to feel better, but also to relieve stress to get out of with this COVID nineteen time to get out of the house. Do you guys have any little mantras that you use or something that drives you when you just don't want to? Do anything today? <laughs> yeah, I, some of them are silly, but they work for me. Um, so when I swim, it is purely like a Zen experience because I'm focused on body balance in the water, which is how you get fast in the water. It's not about being super strong. It's just all technique. When I bike, I try and just really immerse myself in the experience of getting the, the heck out of town. Uh, we have a great uh, rails to trails network in the Seattle area, so I can get out into the countryside pretty quickly. And I just try to enjoy the experience. And truthfully, when I run, I run angry. I just get rid of whatever angst I have. And it, it's just, it's out of my body once I'm done with it. But I have goofy little things that I say to myself, um, you know, like when I'm doing long distance run, every mile has some statement with it, like 11 is heaven. And oh. uh, you know, 10 is Zen. And I have, as soon as I hit a new mile, I say something dumb like that to myself. I love that. No, I think it's great. That's like something that we all can use to do like almost like a mindfulness meditation and get out whatever's bothering you and do something wonderful for your body. Wonderful that maybe not feel good at the time for your body, for your health, for all of that. Great. That's great, Scott. So Doug, is there anything that you do <laughs> when you exercise? <laughs> no, but so much of my exercise now is tied into, um, kind of keeping up with my kids and, and the dogs to some degree too. So um, most of my exercise, it's, you know, it's less about, I want to log 10 miles of running, not that I've done that recently or something that I would, would have done when I was training for something. And now it's more, um, 
you know, staying moving and doing stuff, but kind of getting dragged along. You know, I, I was joking to somebody the other day, you know, we had kids start when I was about 35 and, you know, mm -hmm. toddlers at 38 or 39 aren't a big deal and coaching 10 year olds in baseball, mid 40s, not a big deal. But when you already have got sudden 15, 16 year olds who are like, you know, captains of their you know swim team and stuff um, and you throw a mountain bike at them and then you go try to keep up with them, then you, then you find out, you know, that, that you're, uh, you're aging. So, um, so, but, wow. but having that stuff in, in, you know, that I, you know, I can't, you know, it's, it's something I, I, I'm not, I not, wouldn't want to give up, but not, it can't get away from, them. I mean, I need, you know, they, my kids need to get out and do stuff. Dogs need to get out and do stuff. My kids get out and do stuff. We need to get out of the house and do it. Um, cause the five of us and, and two dogs sitting in the house together constantly would not work. Um, no. fortunately we're in a, an area where we have, you know, access to good green space, um, and now the weather's nice too. You know, we've got some, a decent, you know, a yard. We have a pool, we have a pool, so we're able to, you know, get use that a little bit. Um, so just being able to get out and do stuff is, is key. And um, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a different experience from you know going out and grinding, you know, for training. Um, but uh, you know, still, it's a way to stay moving. And and uh, when I get a little more time to um, my own time at some point. I'd love to get back into doing some more longer stuff. But we'll we'll see what shakes out. Me too. Me too. So we've got, we got two minutes left here. What, uh, you guys have anything else you want to add for people watching today on as we age, how to stay healthy, how to get through the posture at your desk, any words of wisdom on anything from you two? I would say move. I mean, I, it, it sounds so cliche, but people get sedentary. So you don't have to be a triathlete. You don't have to be a super mountain biker or a mountain climber just go move, just go walk, you know, do something to get you moving. That I think has been the, one of the, my, the, the adjustments or accommodations I've made now, you know, in the kind of situation I'm in is, you know, I'm, you know, climb Mount McKinley, done Ironman triathlons, all that. And so there was a bit of a, you know, I used to kind of working, chipping at a big goal, doing something big. And now it's more like, okay, no, just, go walk an hour in a con mm -hmm. conservation area with the dogs. And that's a good thing to do. And it's yeah. not, I, mean, I don't need to, you know, don't need to be, be trying to climb, you know, Denali or working, yeah. you know, I'm in Denali. I, I can take my dogs for a walk, you know, and, and come actually get a decent workout out of doing it and, you know, feel good, get outside, like you said, clear the head and, and, and uh, you know, and have, you know, have a good experience and keep moving. So, yeah. I, I think, think that's great. And do it. However you are able to do whatever works for you, find what works and, and keep moving. That's right. And both of you just queued up for the, for the title of my show, Movement Matters. So thanks for that. Uh, we're out of time. Thank you so much, Scott and Doug, for coming on and sharing your wisdom. This is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to see you guys again. And yeah, you too. for all of you watching, Watch this again, go through some of those exercises. You can rewatch all the shows on, on YouTube. They're on there for you uh, to watch for free. Smell some flowers, take a walk, look at the birds, do whatever you can to find that peace. Count 10 Zen, 11 heaven if you need to while you're walking to clear your mind. And as always, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. And so I hope everyone has a wonderful day. We'll see you in two weeks. Aloha.